We're going to discuss writing answers into the answer sheet in this lesson, 3C. All right, I know you're thinking, come on, just fill in a little oval, the little bubble. And that's true, but there's actually more to it. When an answer is a fraction or decimal, it gets tricky. So I want you to remember that rows go across and columns go up and down. You'll thank me for that when you get into algebra and matrices and all that stuff. So rows go across, columns go up and down. These rows for the fraction bar and the decimal point, we need these, okay? This is where we actually write in the answer on the top. And some of the answers will not be multiple choice, and we'll have to write in and bubble the answer. These answer grids are intended for one answer each. So you'll have an entire grid like this for only one answer. And the row at the top is where we write in the numbers you can actually leave it blank, but if you use it, you'll have a guide to filling in these bubbles, okay? It'll be easier on your eyes. And your answer can start in any column as long as the answer is complete, and any unused column should be left blank. So we could start here to write 12. We could start here, here, or here, as long as we have enough room to put two digits, and then these would be left blank, see? Whichever column we didn't use. So I'll show you. If the answer is a whole number, and we know what that is now if you've been watching these GED videos in this playlist, it's a counting number. It's no fractions or decimals allowed. So if the answer is a whole number, we won't even use the second or third rows. The, you just ignore these, okay? They're just there in case there's decimals or fractions. So just ignore them if it's a whole number. In lesson 8, we're going to get into decimals. And here's a whole number, 1,234. There's no comma. You just... Fill in the 1, 2, 3, 4, and fill in those dots. See? If we have 123.4, now we use that decimal point. See? And then we put the 4. We fill in the 1, 2, 3, decimal point 4. 12.34, we write, we fill in the 1 and the 2. We fill in the decimal point and the 3, 4. 1.234, same thing. We put in the 1, the decimal point, and the 2, 3, 4. If it starts with a decimal point, we start it with a decimal point. Fill in the decimal point and then the numbers. If we have point zero zero two, you can start it here in the second column, or you could start it here in the first column. As long as you, know, you have enough room and the answer is complete, just make sure that if the answer has zeros in it, that you fill in those zero bubbles. You can't leave those blank just because they're zeros. That's part of the answer, okay? Zeros are placeholders. You can't ignore them, all right? So if it's a whole number, like 123, we can start it right up against this edge and put our 123, 123, and then fill in the 123. We could start it here. We could even start it where the 2 is, as long as that's the column that matches that number, okay? In Lesson 7, we're going to be doing fractions. And I don't expect you to memorize all this right now, but... If I show you this now, it'll be easier for your brain when we do get to Lesson 7, okay? So if we have a half, it would be a 1 and then a slash and then a 2. We'd fill in the 1, the slash, and the 2. And my preference for you to make your life easier, I'm trying to help you here, make your fractions with the fraction bar going directly across. If you do, it's going to be easier to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. And you're going to thank me because in Algebra... When we get to the last part of the GED playlist, the algebra is going to need you to have it going straight across. So if you start doing it now, it's going to make your life easier in the future. If you make the slash, it's going to be harder for your brain to process what you need to do. So get into the habit of doing this now. It's just on the answer sheet you need to make it a slash, okay? You know that it means the same thing. Just write it this way, but then fill it in the answer sheet as the slash, okay? We have three halves. Yeah, the numerator can be larger than the denominator. It's an improper fraction. We put the three, then the slash, then the two. That's how we fill in the bubbles. Same thing with 29 halves. Two, nine, slash, two. We fill in the two, the nine, the slash, and the two. And you'll see this when we get into Lesson 7's uh, videos. If your answer is five and a half, you can't write five and a half in here because see how the 29 halves is? 
That's not two and nine halves, that's 29 halves. If you wrote five and a half, you cannot do five and then one slash two because it's going to look like 51 halves. See? Like that's 29 halves. And you can't write five and then skip a space and write one slash two because that's not going to work either. So you might have to leave it as 11 halves. And I'll show you if your answer comes out like this, you don't need to simplify it. But if your answer is in mixed number form, when we get into fractions, I'll show you how to make it like 11 halves. You basically are just going 5 times 2 plus that one numerator. And then you write the 11, the, the 1, 1, slash 2, and that's how you fill it out, okay? If you have 3 one hundredths, these zeros down here are important. It's not 3 over 1, it's 3 over 100. So you need the 3, the slash, the 1, the 0, and the 0, and you have to fill in those zeros. That's part of the answer, all right? So take a look at these. Tala's car payment is $327 per month. How much will she pay in three months? Well, it says per month, and it's three months, so we need to multiply 327 times 3. When we do, we're going to get a dollar amount of $981. Don't need the dollars on the answer sheet. You just put the 9, the 8, the 1, and fill in the 9, the 8, and the 1, okay? Just... Ignore the dollar sign when there's dollar signs, and you have to put it in here. Now, if it's a multiple choice, it's going to have dollar signs, and you just fill in the A, B, C, D, E, or whatever it is. All right, Jade had $820 in her checking account. She spent $210 on groceries and $78 to pay the electric bill. How much does she have left? Well, we need to start with this amount and subtract and subtract, don't we, because she's spending it. We start with the 820, we take away the 210 for groceries and get 610. We take away the $78 for the electric bill and we're left with $532 in her checking account. We ignore the dollar sign, the answer is 532. We can start writing it here if we want to. We could start writing it here where I've got it. We could even start writing it here because we could put 532 because there's room. Just as long as wherever you write it, if there's a blank space, you don't fill any bubbles in that space column. See? I filled in the 5 in this column, the 3 in this column, and the 2 in that column that matched where I wrote it. So that's why you don't have to write the numbers up here, but I'd advise it because you want to pass the test and you don't want to make some silly mistake that you're smacking your forehead saying, oh, I missed one column. All right? Okay, we're going to be moving on to lesson 4 and doing multi-step problems next. All right? I'll see you there. Keep trying. I know you're working at this, and it'll pay off. You'll see. Bye.